Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Zen. Really excited to be with you guys today. Today, I'm going to drop some bombshells. We're going to go deep, deep down the rabbit hole and talk about some new connections. I'm going to ask some questions. I do not have all of the answers. I am going to speculate a little bit, but we're going to have some fun. Grab some popcorn, get cozy, because uh, this is definitely going to be some new information for uh, some people, because I'm putting the pieces together as we speak. I'm still after this video, I'm gonna go dig deeper. But uh, I have enough to make a pretty cool video for now. So this might even be a series. XRP Ledger Foundation, new office in Estonia. Who else is in Estonia? Sologenic Foundation. XRP Ledger Foundation opened up in Estonia. It's been right in front of us this whole entire time. So you remember this? I know you guys remember this. This is in Estonia. This whole building's all developed for digitalization. Estonia is one of the best places in the world to be a digital native right now. They're really looking to be one of the most innovative tech countries in Europe. So much that even President Trump was interested in Estonia's digital development. So this has been a hot spot, so hot that you could check it up on xrplfoundation.org. Um, Here's their address. Call them up. Send them an email. They are in Estonia with Sologenic. The population of Estonia is also 1.331 million. You cannot make this up, guys. You can't make it up. Come on. We've seen this. XRP Ledger Foundation is excited to say that we have an office in T-A-L-L-I-N-N. -N. I don't want to mispronounce it. We look forward to having XRP L devs visit us there. More info on this soon. Okay, so um, I have a bunch of different things. Where do I want to go? So we're going to go more to like the global thing. So what's important about Estonia and what is kind of like the narrative? Uh, they want to cut Russia from SWIFT, right? Well, Estonia, the Gulf of Finland, this is Estonia right here. This is another country. This is a really important corridor for Russia. So uh, remember we had this riddle from Ray back with Trump, Putin, China, gold, XRP. This part of the whole, the whole thing. So then we have Corium, Michael Zakowski, who is part of the Corium project, which is working with Sologenic Foundation. He's the head of Ripple X. Let's go, uh, this is a good place to start. So a lot of people should start with this video, extended interview with Ethan Beard and Xpring. So Xpring, I believe, started in 2018. What Spring's objective, what are you guys trying to do? The first use case that we focused on from the Ripple perspective is on cross-border payments. Uh, at the same time, we think there's lots of other use cases for XRP and XRP Ledger. And so Spring is really an initiative to focus on new use cases for XRP and XRP Ledger outside of cross-border payments. What kind of companies are you guys looking at? Um, what's the future look like? So for Spring, we're focused on, on a couple of different things. XRP payments um, is an important one. I think the other area uh, uh, that we're spending some time digging into is looking at the tokenization of, of real-world assets. Assets. The idea there. He just said they're looking at the tokenization of real world assets. And Ripple is specializing in cross border payments. That means someone else has to do it. Michael Zakowski is the head of Ripple X products. Michael Zakowski also created Logos Network and um, Ripple X Spring acquired. Logos Network. I'm going to put this out there right now. I will not be surprised if one day Ripple actually acquires um, or basically teams up with, with Sologenic in some way or makes that official announcement. Um, so Michael Zakowski is also Blackstone. We see Trump is really interested in digital development in Estonia. Uh, Trump and Blackstone have been loyal to each other a long time. And who is Blackstone? Michael Zakowski was there 2013. Um, so 
all the puzzle pieces are coming together, uh, it seems. So uh, what else do I have? Uh, let's finish this. They're generating, there are a lot of assets that people purchase and own that are actually quite illiquid. They're quite hard to transfer. And by tokenizing these things, you can actually make them much more liquid and much easier to transfer around. An asset that's easier to transfer and has more liquidity is better than one that isn't. And so you can imagine that over, over time, kind of all of the assets that we own actually end up being tokenized in many ways. And we're even seeing similar sort of things um, inside of really consumer-oriented things like gaming where you know, a lot of people spend a lot of money buying virtual goods inside of, of games that they love, uh, but those goods are actually locked up in that game and it's really hard to actually transfer um, a good that you own. So what's he talking about there, guys? He's talking about equilibrium games right here in NFT marketplaces inside games. So he, so he just talked about solo and equilibrium games back in 2018. All the information is already online for us. You just have to go and dig. And so by tokenizing these virtual goods and building a platform where they can be exchanged inside of a marketplace, you can actually remove that level of trust that's needed and really ease the transfer. And it starts to shift things like games from being uh, based around kind of free to play and selling virtual goods to almost like a marketplace driven or a market driven economy. We've recently seen um, Omni, for example, they're using XRP um, as a payout method for folks that lend their stuff. As they're a company that's being supported by Spring, what makes them successful um, in that specific use case? Omni's an interesting use case where they have a, an interesting platform where you can basically put real world goods in, uh, into their storage um, service and you can loan them out or rent them out so that other people can use them and you can get paid. And so they've enabled a way for now for users to get paid through XRP. You know, you can look around your room and see, you know, here's a surfboard that I'm not using. You can put it on Omni and now all of a sudden your surfboard is actually turning in and earning you XRP. In some ways it's kind of like mining, right? It's like instead of taking that old gaming PC and like burning up a bunch of electricity to make, to make uh, some sort of. So I'm just making connections right now. He's talking about real world assets. So we got to think big. What if we're talking, I'm making this connection right now. If they're talking about cutting Russia off from SWIFT, if that's really their plan, and Estonia is one of the key areas for Russia trade, they're going to be needing to trade oil. They're going to be needing to trade serious assets. What if all this is done through uh, the, these projects on X-Springs that started in 2018? So let's watch one more. How does the new dev platform make it easier for developers to work with XRP and Interledger protocol? So for the past year, we've been working with developers to try to build an ecosystem around XRP, Interledger. Uh, and one of the things that we found time and time again is that building on blockchain is really hard. And so what we set out to do with Spring is to build tools for developers to easily tap into the power of XRP and ILP and really make it simple to add money into their app, uh, no matter where their app is or what programming language they're using. Uh, so for example, we recently released a new SDK, the Spring SDK, and what this SDK looks to do is make it really simple to work with XRP Ledger and with Interledger. And so using the SDK, where previously a developer would have to write 100 lines uh, of JavaScript, for example, in order to actually just do a simple transaction on XRP Ledger, now using this SDK, an iOS developer who writes and Swift um, can actually just use 10 lines of code to do the exact same thing. Uh, so this is a new SDK. We rolled it out this morning. We're going to make it available in a variety of different languages to support the entire world of developers. So I think for any technology, developers are really the lifeblood of a new technology. Uh, developers are the ones who actually like take the code, uh, take a new technology and integrate it into the applications that you and I use every single day. Uh, and so without developers who are actually building on a platform and using a technology, it's not made available anywhere. And so really what we're looking to do with Spring uh, is make it simple for any developer, no matter what programming language they're using, no matter where they are, to actually use Spring to build on XRP and ILP and add money into their app. See, he just said how important it is for developers to be able to develop on the XRP ledger and how it's essential to uh, the, the growth of the network.
So these are really important projects to the overall success of XRP. Okay, guys, if you like my work, uh, if you like my information, my research that I put, put out there, uh, I recommend that you join my website, $150 for the year or 15 bucks a month. Um, the zenlounge.uscreen.io. Please check the description below. And if you want to support me uh, this, this new year, then would love to have you join. We have workshops every single week for uh, beginner, intermediary, and advanced. Let me know what you think about these connections that I put forth today. The population of 1.331 million, the XRP Ledger Foundation being there, uh, all of these little dots that I connected. You know, that's my favorite thing to do is connect dots. Uh, let's see how the price of Solo uh, continues. Uh, let's see if it, if it dips. <laughs> I'm scooping it up. Everybody, uh, remember, I did not share financial advice on this channel. I'm merely just, I'm, I'm purely just sharing uh, my life, my journey, what I'm researching, uh, what I'm passionate about with you guys. So everybody, uh, please remember that. Have an awesome day and good night. Peace.